Now, I know you're all thinking, oh, he's going to draw these horrible graphs, and we're going to think about how they intersect and all these kind of things. Well, actually, it's not the type of graphs we're talking about. The type of graphs I want to actually look at looks something like this. Now you're thinking, how is this a graph? Well, a graph is just a bunch of straight lines, right? Well, all I've done is drawn a bunch of straight lines, and they're connected by specific nodes. And each one of these nodes has an edge. The edge from A to B is 6, A to D is 1, and so forth. These type of graphs are used in everyday applications. They're used in network applications. They're used in electrical engineering. They're used for businessmen. Businessmen, when they go to work, they want to sell you a product. They have a map. They're going to start at their house A. They have to return to their house A. But they want to maximize all the places they want to travel to. This is called the traveling salesman problem. But they want to do it in the shortest distance, right? They want to travel from A to Z and return home to A by 5 p.m. But they want to maximize the number of houses they can go to. And this is what the subject of graph theory is. And there are so many different types of algorithms out there to find the shortest distances. But I want to look at one specific use case. Let's look at this graph here. Now let's think about your situation here at home. And let's take A to be your house. You know, and B is your friend's house, and C is a shop, and I don't know, D is school, and E is the chai, chai shop. And the idea is you want to travel from A to C in the shortest possible way. Now, this is a very simple graph, and in the real world, you have these huge networks, huge networks. Think about the internet. Internet connection is the fastest, shortest way to get from my computer to the server, to your computer, right? And then pass the information back. It can't go a long-winded way, because otherwise you never get the information in the fastest amount of time. But how do they do that? There must be various algorithms out there, right? And engineers and mathematicians, they spend so much time trying to figure out the fastest way to solve a problem. What's the fastest way I can get electricity, right? You've all studied circuit diagrams before. Well, that's just a graph. I'm just trying to get electricity from one point to another point. But what is the quickest way to do that? The mathematicians are always doing this. The engineers are always doing this. They're trying to come up with new ways to find the fastest way to do something. Let's look at this example. Okay, I start from point A, and we draw this nice table on the left-hand side. Now, obviously, if I'm already at point A, I don't have anywhere to travel. So the distance from A to A is zero. Now, the distance from A to B, you believe is six, right? And if you think about this in terms of a map, let's say my school is here and my uh, shop is here, right? My school and my house is here, and I can travel in a straight line. That may not necessarily be the fastest way. Google has many different ways on the GPS to show you how to get to a location. Right? Well, the fastest way from A to B would actually be going to from A to D and D to B. That would only take me three minutes instead of six. So I found the fast way to B. The fastest way to D, of course, is only one minute. The fastest way to E would be two minutes. But if you have a complex system, a huge graph, a huge network of, I don't know, 500 nodes, 900 nodes, 10,000 nodes, right? You think about a WhatsApp group. A WhatsApp group may have 256 people. You have to send a message to 256 people at the same time in the fastest possible way. It's all using graph data, all using these algorithms to find the fastest way to get something. How useful is this? You know, and I talked about that people have used it in terms of the internet and electrical situations. Well, Google's GPS uses graph theory, tells you the fastest way home. The famous traveling sales one problem uses shortest distance algorithms so you can maximize the sales in the day. You can go home and keep his family happy. Oh, I sold 10 butters today. I sold 20 vacuum cleaners. You know, I hit all these homes. But what about our current situation in the world? Right now, we're all suffering from being in self-isolation because of COVID-19. Did anybody ever think about how we could use graph theory in this situation? Actually, some people have, and actually some countries did. 
What some countries did is they used the location tracker on your phone to determine who you're coming in contact with. If I have my phone A, my phone B, this is my friend, this is my father. And the locations are both on, my father and me come in contact with one another, and we realize that the location tracker realizes that we come into contact with one another. And that's stored somewhere. And what these governments have done around the world is they said, well, person A was tested positive for coronavirus, and person B has now come into contact with person A. And now they're going to track person B with this GPS location and find the shortest distance so they can apprehend him and put him in self isolation. Fascinating, right? That's what they've been doing. That's what some countries have been doing. Some countries that have low numbers, they've been using your information to determine which way to stop the virus from spreading by using graphs. Such a simple idea of finding the shortest path has been used in real life applications. And I hope you're slowly understanding why mathematics is important to the real world.